Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're talking about Builder Trend, and I'm really excited to do this video and more on Builder Trend because it is such a powerful tool for my business, and I want to share that with you. Now, of course, if you are subscribed to my channel, you know that I also talk quite a bit about QuickBooks, and this video specifically is going to talk about both Builder Trend and QuickBooks and the ability to integrate the two. And to be honest with you, that integration is really the, the main and only reason why I use Builder Trend. I'm such an avid uh, QuickBooks user that I need my rehab project management software to integrate with QuickBooks and I need that integration to be clean and I need that to be reliable. And it certainly is. So I'm going to demonstrate how to set that up today. All right. So what we see on my screen here is a Builder Trend project, kind of a sample project we're going to use to demonstrate this. But where the setup happens is actually not within a specific project, it's within your Builder Trend accounting setup generally. But before we get there, I'm going to go to QuickBooks because the sequence in which you do this is kind of important. Your products and services in QuickBooks is going to be what you map to Builder Trend, okay? And if you're not familiar with products and services in QuickBooks, I want you to go and check out the video that I did on that. Um, I have a few on those where we talk about using products and services to specify the, um, the detail behind the expenses, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring up my products and services in QuickBooks, okay? So I'm going to my settings and I'm going to products and services. And you'll have products and services available under any um, QuickBooks subscription. So it's not like you need to have plus or anything like that. So you are going to define a list of products and services. And think about these products and services as categories uh, through which you would want to analyze your rehabs, okay? So this is a list of categories, really. And this list can be as detailed or as general as you want it to be. What we're looking at here is my list. My list happens to be a little bit more detailed, and I actually use the National Association of Home Builders cost codes as my sample, and then I tweak it a little bit. If you'd like my list of products and services, you can download it at IncomeDix.com. That might be a good starting point. But basically what I'm doing here is I'm laying out the different categories that I'd want to uh, tag expenses to, okay? So I'm laying out uh, when I have an expense, I might want to categorize it to a specific, in this case, it's called product or service. I, I just really call it a category, okay? Now, when you set these up, you'll probably start with Excel. And that's how I did it. Lay them out in Excel and then import them. That's a really good thing to do because you can import it into QuickBooks and then you can import it into Builder Trend as well. But really take some time to think about this. Of course, you can edit it down the road, but think about to what degree of detail do you want to track your projects, okay? When people ask me how detailed should this be, my advice is to make it uh, to the degree that you want to report on, right? So if you are you know, estimating to a really detailed level, you probably want to see your actuals to that actual uh, detailed level as well. And so your products and services should reflect that. If you're doing a lot of projects and you just want to know in general how much you're spending, and this would potentially apply if you have a GC doing a lot of your work too. You know, maybe it's just rough electric, rough plumbing, framing, maybe more general, that's okay too. And maybe you want to start there and get more detailed as you go. All right, so you're going to import that list of products and services, and I start there. I start with QuickBooks. Now, when you import, um, I do recommend that you try to do as much of this on the front end of your import. When I say uh, this, I mean uh, tagging it that you purchase it and that it maps to a certain expense account. Now, I'm demonstrating in a uh, residential remodeling company. Okay, so this remodeling company treats all of these expenses as direct construction costs that go to its cost of goods sold. If you are doing a renovation for like a rehab that you own, a property that you own, you might instead be going to CapEx, okay? So it depends on your situation, whether you're going to fixed assets or cost of goods sold. In my case, in this demonstration, I'm, I'm putting everything to direct construction costs, okay? And what this mapping does is whenever I use this permits and fees on the products and services, it's going to map it to direct construction costs. And as a quick refresher, without getting too far into the weeds here, where do those products and services show up? When you create an expense, instead of going to the category and just doing direct construction costs, instead of doing that, 
I'm going to instead go to this item section here and I'm going to say permits and fees. And now when I log this expense, QuickBooks is going to one, capture the detail that I've indicated permits, and two, it's going to map it to direct construction costs, okay? And again, if you need a refresher on how that all works, check out that previous video on that. But we're gonna assume that we have an idea of how products and services work. The first step is to set up your products and services in QuickBooks, indicate that you purchase them, and then we're ready for step two. Step two is to set up our products and services in Builder Trend. Now, Builder Trend happens to call them something different, and we're gonna talk about that. They call them cost codes, all right? So to do that, we're gonna to go to our gear icon in Builder Trend, all right? We're gonna to go to our setup. And everything relating to QuickBooks is generally going to happen through cost codes or something called accounting. So cost codes is where we're gonna start here. So I'm gonna go into cost codes and you can see that I've already got a bunch of these in here, okay? Now, if it's your first time, you're going to want to add these. Now, this, again, is very detailed. You do not need to have this many cost codes in your system. You don't need to be this detailed. In fact, sometimes I recommend you don't get this detailed, at least when you're starting. The question is, when you have expenses, will you have enough information to tag them to this detail of a level? If not, you need to go uh, be more general with it, okay? But you can import your cost codes. Now, actually, what's cool is that QuickBooks, or I'm sorry, Builder Trend actually gives you this NAHB cost code import right here. Um, so you could just do it this way, okay? You can click this and it's going to give you those codes. I'm not going to do it here because I already have my cost codes ready to go, all right? Now, if you wanted to um, you know, add categories or add specific cost codes, you can do it here as well, all right? Now, um, once you have imported your cost codes, okay, and once you have them set, the real important thing here is to now link them to QuickBooks, okay? So just the fact that we have one list in QuickBooks, we have one list in Builder Trend, and that list is identical, that's not quite enough to tell the system to connect the two, okay? They're not gonna know that building permits equals building permits, okay? We have to do that linking. Unfortunately, it's a manual process, but it's something we only have to do once and we're set, okay? So well, all we have to do, and by the way, I can click into this and we can always edit it, right? So here's the title of my, my code and here's the category. I like to have a category. Um, generally, what I'm doing here, the numbering system helps to order them. So that's why I'm using that order, uh, that a numbering system. And you'll see that the NAHB codes do the same kind of thing, okay? Now, as I have this popped up, you're gonna notice this little thing here, time, time clock labor code, okay? What QuickBooks, I'm sorry, what Builder Trend is asking you here is do we want to make this available for our uh, employees or our subcontractors to log labor against, okay? And so if so, we'd wanna click that. Now for the most part, mine are off for that because I'm not gonna have my employees log labor against blueprints and surveys. However, something like demolition labor, I certainly would want them to log, okay? Notice here the default labor code. Mine is, um, mine is grayed out. The reason mine is grayed out is because I actually track labor costs per employee as opposed to per code, okay? And that's, a, that's just a decision you have to make with your business. All right, so you're gonna take some time with this, right? It, it will take some time. Again, if your list is a little bit less detailed, it'll take a little bit less time, but you can see I have a, a, quite a lot here. We do everything, right? So we do um, foundation work, we do additions, we do uh, high-end carpentry. We kind of need everything in there, all right? So once you've established those codes, now we want to uh, manage the QuickBooks cost codes, okay? So you're gonna want to, to click this. This is going to bring up on the one side our builder trend list, and then it's going to tell us what QuickBooks is. Now when you start out, this is gonna be blank, and you're gonna click edit link, and you're gonna tell the system Builder Trend cost code building permits, and I want it to go to building permits. Very tedious process, but again, you only have to do it once. This is a great task too, if you have a VA, um, you know, really easy to teach uh, how to set this up, okay? And you just wanna do that mapping. I call this mapping, okay? So we're mapping, we wanna make sure that everything on the left has something on the right, okay? And then we can see that it's all mapped. And what I do occasionally too is we'll be adding some 
I'll look through and make sure everything's mapped. Sometimes we miss one, right? So why would we add a cost code? Maybe we get into a new form of business or maybe we're finding that we really wanna be able to track something a little bit more to a detailed level. So we'll add a cost code to QuickBooks. Do we add it then to Builder Trend? We wanna make sure that we're doing that, okay? So it looks like everything's kind of linked up here. That is good. So my cost codes are linked. That is step one. Cost code linking is the most time intensive but most important part about linking QuickBooks to Builder Trend. The second most important part is linking projects, okay? Customers or projects. So QuickBooks, uh, QuickBooks Online Plus has the ability to do project tracking. QuickBooks Online, the lower levels, we certainly have customers, okay? So when it comes to linking your projects to QuickBooks, we need to map that out as well, okay? So uh, what we need to do is tell the system that when we have a new project, we need it to link correctly to, um, to QuickBooks. So I'm gonna go into my accounting here and just look at some settings that I have set up, some defaults. Now once you kind of set this up, it's really easy to add new ones. So right here, right here we have job options. Link job to QuickBooks and we're asking, QuickBooks is asking, do we wanna to link to the job or to the customer? Now the word job is not consistent with QuickBooks, that means project, okay? If you don't have QuickBooks Online Plus, you're gonna need it to go to customer, but if you have QuickBooks Online Plus, I recommend using job. And then we have this option here, create a new customer in QuickBooks when we create a new job in Builder Trend. I have that selected. So I create a new project in Builder Trend, it's going to automatically create that uh, project in QuickBooks. Okay, and then we can set up our invoice mapping as well, our budgeting. Now, one thing that's really cool, and this was a big pet peeve of mine up until about a year, maybe two years ago, include QuickBooks other costs in your budget. So I click this and I want this to be a yes. Uh, so in the past, we used to have to create all expenses in Builder Trend first, then they shoot over to QuickBooks and it was a one-way sync. But now you can create your expenses in QuickBooks or Builder Trend and you get both directions of that sync. And that's really important to me. I like to do most of my work in QuickBooks and see them in Builder Trend. So you want, want to click that as well. All right, so then when you add a new project, the, the QuickBooks system is going to add that uh, as well. So I have this 277 to Pew here, and if we look in, um, in QuickBooks, you see that I have a project for 277 to Pew, okay? And that's that link. Now, if you didn't have QuickBooks Online Plus, you're just going to be linking directly to a customer, okay? So if I go to the info of this job, there's gonna be a section to make sure that our link with accounting is accurate. Now, I shouldn't really have to do anything with this if I have my default settings, meaning when I've created this project, it's gonna automatically create the new one in QuickBooks, but let's go to my accounting tab to make sure that the link exists. Okay, so I can edit connection and see what's going on here. Okay, so it's linked to uh, a sub-customer, which is called project, and so this is me, that's the customer, okay? and then the sub-customer of it is the job. And that's it, okay? So I've just checked that connection and it looks good. I could unlink it, but there's no need to do that. And then we have another option down here. Now, by default, this is click. This is that QuickBooks other costs. So this is going to account for anything that we add to QuickBooks, we want it to show up in our Builder Trend budget, okay? So let's visualize that. Where does that appear? So. If we look at within QuickBooks, I've added a ton of costs here, direct construction costs, okay? I've added a bunch of these. And because I'm using products and services, I can now group by my products and services. And for example, I can take uh, wall framing, okay? Materials wall framing. I have all of these expenses totaling $942, okay? So they're in QuickBooks, so my P&L looks good, I'm ready for taxes, all is, all is good and easy, right? But is Builder Trend accounting for those the same way? So when I'm in Builder Trend, I might want to go to my budget to see how I'm doing, and I don't want to have to you know, work in Excel or, or try to uh, manually map things over from QuickBooks. So I can look at my wall framing. There's a bunch of different columns. I'm going to quickly skip to the right and look at this QuickBooks Other Costs. 
And these are the costs that come in directly from QuickBooks when they're entered in QuickBooks. And you see at 942.78, which I believe is the exact same as this, right? And if I were to click on this plus, it's going to show me the seven transactions in QuickBooks that I can then see right here that are going to match up exactly. All right, so this other cost column, to be honest with you, the majority of my costs that are tracked are right here because almost everything's in QuickBooks. The other thing that can be tracked, maybe with QuickBooks, maybe not, depends if you're doing payroll or not, is time clock labor. Now, time clock labor is going to be tracked by our employees tracking time against those cost codes that we've indicated that they're allowed to. And so I have right here uh, that, that indication, right? So when you go to um, add a shift for your time clock, in the cost section, your employees are going to have this list and they're only going to be able to select those that you've indicated they should select. For example, like my blueprints won't show up here, right? Okay, so, so the cost of your project is made up of certainly the QuickBooks other costs and then it depends on how you want to track your labor. I like to have uh, my labor tracked right here in, in Builder Trend because I set up cost uh, default costs for my employees that might be a little bit different than what I actually pay them in payroll. So um, as opposed, you know, I, I might add in to the cost of my employee. I might add in the fact that we have to pay their workers comp, the, pack, the fact that we have to pay for HR. So I would adjust that. So the cost of your project is going to be a lot of the QuickBooks stuff. And let me just collapse this. So a lot of the QuickBooks stuff and then, you know, some, some of the other stuff as well, the time clock labor as well. Now we're going to get into bills and POs and the future videos um, and how to track variances and all that kind of stuff. Uh, you can see I don't have any estimates for this project. We certainly will in other videos because that's how I want you to do it is, is put your estimates in Builder Trend and then as you spend through QuickBooks we can see the consumption of those estimates. Okay, But generally that's how we see those costs come in from QuickBooks and you can see that things are coming in really nicely and uh, pretty quickly too. It's usually within a minute or two that an expense logged in QuickBooks will show up here. As long as our mapping is strong, both at the project level and at the products and services level, everything's gonna come in here really, really nicely, okay? So that's a quick uh, tutorial on how you can link your projects and your products and services between Builder Trend and QuickBooks Online. We're going to be doing a lot more with Builder Trend, so if you have specific requests or questions, throw them in the comments right here. I'm interested to know what you want to see. We're going to go through the whole gamut of Builder Trend. It is a great tool, something I use every single day, and I think that uh, you'll find it useful as well. Whether you do residential remodeling for retail customers or if you're just doing your own uh, renovations. Okay, so um, thanks so much for watching. Check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com and we will see you on the next video.